All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, I have an action-packed vlog for you. Hope everybody enjoyed the ECC vlog from last week. And it was only like uh, 30 minutes or so long. But it was basically, I mean, that was all the footage I shot at, uh, at ECC with my iPhone and with my GoPro and with a bunch of other nonsense like that. But like I said, we do have an action-packed vlog for you today. Let me get out my vlog notes. We do have a lot of stuff to talk about. I have a lot of vlog notes. Some of this is going to have to wait until next week. I have a whole mess of first impressions to do. I have some beer. I have a whole bunch of shout-outs to do. We've got a bunch of updates on other stuff. I do have a retro vaping segment prepared as well. But first things first, Monday Double Feature. Hey, I'm going to do it. We're going to go. We're going to do the Monday Double Feature. Monday Double Feature it is great it's the way that i did my videos for a really long time and it worked really really well that's the schedule i'm going to go back to for at least the end of the year four videos a week one of them being over an hour long vlog video is a lot it's a lot to do i feel like i feel like i never stop shooting and editing and fiddling and fixing and this and that and then you run into technical problems and you're like why does my sound sound bad why does the audio sound like this why is my camera like this it's just a lot it's just a lot to deal with next weekend i'm going to be in winston-salem north carolina at vape mania so the double feature uh i'll be flying home monday uh, I'm going to try to publish, at least publish the double feature. What we're going to do is double features and vlogs throughout the end of the year, although there might be uh, some inconsistencies in there. I honestly don't know 100% what my schedule looks like just due to my travel schedule. wanted to give a quick update. I posted on GrimGreen.com not too long ago about wanting to have people help me out with the website. Um, I just need some some help with some articles and some news and some possible content for grimgreen.com as it stands i run everything by myself i run grimgreen.com by myself i do all of my youtube by myself all of my correspondence via email by myself all my social media facebook instagram and twitter it's all just me i spend 12 hours 13 hours 14 hours every single day just doing all this stuff not to mention running a liquid company uh, on top of all of that. So I reached out to the community as sort of a, hey, if you want to help out, that would be great. If not, I totally get it. People are busy. A lot of people wrote submissions and I'm still going through most of them. There's one girl for sure that I know. She just did a fantastic job. I want to have her be one of my content creators. But yes, to everybody waiting to see if uh, if you made it or not, I really haven't made any decisions. I've made one decision and I still have to pick a few more people that I want to uh help out and this isn't like a full-time job this isn't think this is like an internship okay this is like an unpaid internship this is a chance for you to do something creative to give back to the community a little bit it will take you know two hours a week at the most to knock out an article once a week um it should be it, it should be it should be good it should work out in the end really good but like i said no decisions on that are probably going to be made till uh, uh way after uh way after vape mania and additionally i want to talk about my youtube real fast if you go on my youtube and you comment on one of my videos and you're just a dick if you're just an asshole and then you leave no way for me to reply to you to defend myself against your accusations i'm just going to delete your shit i'm sick of it i'm sick of trolls just posting stuff i don't care if people make offhand or eh, maybe rude ish comments that shit doesn't bother me because i can reply to you but if you have it in your account settings so that people can't reply to you that's uh that's not fair that's not letting people reply your shit's just uh your shit's gonna just just get deleted uh i do want to talk about what happened in california but i do have a little bit of a rant a little bit uh it's just a slight just a slight rant that i want to go on i uploaded my snow wolf 200 watt box mod uh video roughly let's say two weeks ago as uh, as i'm doing my research and doing all this stuff and writing down notes and and preparing this video 
I realize that, yes, there's already a goddamn updated version of the mod that I haven't even done a review for. It's not even up on YouTube yet. And there's a new white snow wolf. There's the snow wolf LE that fixes a lot of the problems that I talked about. My decision making was, I know that there's an update to this. I still want to put this video up in case someone goes online and sees, oh, there's a 200 watt snow wolf. The non-LE version, the original version. Hmm, I wonder if that's something for me. I'm gonna see if there's any reviews. Maybe my review could be helpful to that person. And I'm not one of these guys who gets something and feels like I need to review it right away. That shit doesn't matter to me. I don't care about being first. I care about being thorough. I care about spending a lot of time with something. Some of the first impressions that you're going to see today, they won't have a video up on YouTube, a full review for a month, maybe longer, maybe two months. I just have a lot of stuff and I like to be focused on a certain thing and spend a lot of time with a certain device, box, tube, atomizer, whatever. I like to I like to focus on that and spend a lot of time with it before I feel comfortable talking about it. And it just upsets me when I have a device, like I have a product and it's either just going to get a review or it just got a review and there's already an updated version. Here's what I'm gonna do about that. China, knock it off. I am not going to accept any more revisions, betas, whatever from China. I'm just not gonna do it. If you have a new sub-ohm tank, I don't care. I want the final version of whatever you're going to release. I refuse to take part in this constant upgrading, 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 upgrading war anymore. I'm just not going to be a part of it. I will return your packages to you. In fact, in fact, here's what's going to show my hypocrisy. I do have a first impressions of an updated device. The Evic VT. The Evic VT hasn't really been out that long. And they've updated it to the Evic. Well, I guess it's not really an update. It's like a complimentary version. It's the Evic VT Mini. But I refuse. I refuse to be a part of the constant upgrading and outdating of our vape gear. Some of these products have a shelf life of like three months before they get updated. And I'm just I'm just not taking part in that anymore. I'm gonna go in detail with my Chinese contacts that I have. And if they say, oh, good morning, purchasing manager. Would you like to review the new Super uh, Dragon Tail mech mod? And if I ask them, is there gonna be an update to this in three months? Is there gonna be an update to this in six months? Then no. If this is your final product, if this is the best thing that you're offering right now, then possibly. But if you're upgrading it in two months, three months, six months, sorry, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not being a part of that any more. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm putting my foot down. I'm sick of the Chinese constantly updating all their stuff. And I'm not saying that. I mean, that sounded really, really racist and it's not racist. I'm sick of manufacturers in China constantly updating their stuff and I refuse to be a part of it anymore. I'm just not going to be a part of it anymore. The constant upgrading is, uh, it's ridiculous. It's not good for vaping. I don't agree with it. So moving forward, now that that rant now that that rant is over, there was a guy who emailed me, messaged me on Facebook. And this is before we get to California. And he said something along the lines of, hey, is this you? And I said, what? And he attached this screenshot. Someone texted this guy with this text message. It said, hey, Tim, this is Grim Green. I've noticed you're a big time fan of all my videos and I'm going to be in Jersey next week if you would like to meet up for coffee and swap vape tales. S someone pretending to be me messaged this guy and said, hey, this is Grim Green. I noticed you're such a big fan. I'm going to be in Jersey next week, which I'm not going to be in Jersey next week. Maybe we could meet up for coffee and to swap vape tales. First of all, what's wrong with this is I would never text someone and say, hey, do you want to swap vape tales? I don't text random strangers. I don't email random strangers. There's very few people that have my actual phone number and those are the people that I talk to. If someone ever approaches you or messages you or texts you and says, hey, this is Grim Green, 
Can I review something? Will you send me this? Do you want to meet up for coffee and swap vape tails? You tell them to go fornicate themselves with an iron stick because that is not me. That's not what I do. I don't just solicit people. I don't look. That is ridiculous. I think that is ridiculous. I can't. I can't honestly cannot believe that somebody did that. That is. That is insane. That is in. That is insanity. That is insane to me. I have one official contact where you can always reach me, Nick at GrimGreen.com. That's where all my emails go. That's where all my emails come from. I get messages on Facebook. I get messages on Instagram. But the one surefire, you know it's me. You know you're speaking directly with me. I have nobody else that answers my emails, nobody that answers Facebooks, nobody that does this, that, and the other. It's all through me, Nick at GrimGreen.com. That is my one true email i think this is a i think this is scary i think this is ridiculous so moving forward uh there was some uh, stuff that happened in uh california california had their special secret session um and a lot of vapors went up there to testify uh during this during this time and i apologize for all the mm and ahs that i'm throwing in here i'm going to try to edit those out but so many people were up there and i didn't get to make it because i was out of town this happened on a Tuesday, and on Monday, I was out of town. I was driving back home. I didn't get home on Monday until well into the evening. It was like 10 p.m., and I see this happening on, on Twitter or on, on Instagram, and they said, oh, there's a bus leaving Orange County at 4 a.m. We're going to go up to the Capitol building, and I'm looking at that going, 4 a.m., it's 10 p.m. now. I would have to leave my house in three hours, drive up to Orange County, and get on a bus for seven hours. It just wasn't going to happen. I had I had just got home. I was exhausted. There wasn't a chance of me getting up there, unfortunately. But this happened this last Tuesday. I did get an update from Stefan. I emailed him. I messaged him on Facebook and I said, look, I know you're busy. I'm going to be shooting my vlog and I want, desperately want to give an update as to what happened in California. Anything you have would be incredibly helpful. And of course, Stefan's on it. He writes me back and says, yes, I do in fact have an update. I'll be writing something later today. I just got caught up on my sleep, but here's the short version. So AB6 passed the Assembly Health Committee yesterday. It was just one battle in the war and we're still very much in the game. It's not over yet. And after yesterday's showing of people that kept coming through the doors wave after wave after wave, we now have additional arguments to make in private conversations with legislators since every single person represents a lot of votes to them. Number two, we need to continue with the calls and letters to your elected officials. We need to keep up the pr we need to keep the pressure up. In fact, I would love to see it increase in intensity. I will be meeting up with Lucy and Vince tonight, and I'm putting a small team together that will put be pushing for this because there is only so much I can be directly managing myself. In a few days, there's not a lot of time, uh, a week or two at the most. The list of contact details and people involved are here and i'm going to post the link in the description this is not blowing smoke.org backslash session and it has uh the breakdowns of what sb5 and ab6 are what sb6 and ab7 are what they do how to contact your assembly people uh it's it's really really good and i'll post the link to that in the description so he goes on and says, uh, Senator Patricia Bates from the Senate Appropriations Committee meeting on Monday is a prime example. When polled prior to the call to action, she was intending to vote yes on all the bills. We know her office was one of the ones that got hammered with calls. She changed her mind, voted no on all the bills intended during that committee. Not that it mattered since the rest still had a majority vote, but it shows that the pressure we're applying has a very clear effect. Absolutely it does. I agree with you. We need to people we need people to not get discouraged. It's always difficult to have a large group voicing their opposition only to see that bill pass. People feel ignored. I assured everyone that their opposition was not ignored, even though based on the committee yesterday, they vote 
they vote pretty much along party lines. Great. Their voices will now carry over into other conversations. A lot of times there is no instant gratification when testifying or speaking up since it takes a while to continue on the path that the bills take. We need more consumers showing up to these things. As some folks have noticed, 90 to 95 percent of the folks there were industry people, which is great, but the consumer numbers were on the extremely low side. We were a little surprised by the 200 to, 50 to 300 people turnout because I expected that, but the low consumer turnout where I expected the least 100 to 250 more folks uh, surprised me so I said thank you so much Stefan so absolutely Stefan is absolutely correct if you're not following not blowing smoke on Instagram or social media or visiting their website then you're not doing your job uh, as a vaping advocate but he's absolutely right the pressure that we apply via uh, emails phone calls whatever Twitter even you can sway these people's votes. We can we can still we still have many more opportunities to get these ridiculous bills AB5, AB6, SB6, AB7, SB8, SB9, SB10, SB9, AB10. Did I say AB10 already? There's a lot of them. I'm going to be posting helpful links in the description to where you can help out. Even if you're not in California, I really feel like you should help out. California is things that happen here end up happening other places. It's the same the same thing goes for New York and the same thing goes for California. And I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> wow, that was intense. But yeah, get on board, uh, help out. I'll be posting links in the description to notblowingsmoke.org, both on their social media, notblowingsmoke.org backslash session to where you can uh, you can help out California and you know I travel so much that if you know hopefully the next one that comes up when we can all get up to Sacramento I'm just gonna plan it ahead of time I'm gonna make a vacation of it I'm gonna fly up there get a hotel in Sacramento relax up there go to the Senate committee meeting spend another night in Sacramento and then fly home that's what I'm gonna do that's my plan uh, I have to get up there and we have to get not just industry people like Stefan said but also consumers consumers Consumers, consumers, consumers. I can't believe that there wasn't a lot more consumers, being that it's in Sacramento, which is a big town. It's, I talk to vapors from Sacramento all the time. So yeah, California update. There we go. That's what I have uh, for my opener. How's that? How's that? That workout? Uh, we talked about the schedule, writers. Uh, we talked about California. I did a little bit of a rant. Um, one thing I want to end on before we get to beer. All the music, a lot, and I get this question a lot, so this is why I'm addressing it. I'm not saying this just because I want to say it. It's because people ask me and I want to address this question. All the music that I use in my vlogs is all just royalty-free tracks that I have purchased online for the use in YouTube videos. You can't just go on iTunes and be like, I'm going to use Metallica because... YouTube will go, no, you're not going to use Metallica. So I go buy these tracks, and these tracks are retardedly expensive. This 20-second clip I have, that, that little metal gent music that I have right at the end with the grim green and the not blowing smoke, and it's like... That... That cost me 30 bucks to buy that freaking track, and it's 20 seconds long. But I liked it so much, I said, I have to use that in my outro. 30 freaking dollars! So no, all of the music that I use in any of my videos and my vlogs, it's not bands, it's not artists, it's just royalty-free tracks that I bought online for the purpose of using in a public YouTube video. It's like these studio musicians who are just like, what's next, a punk song? Okay, what's next, a metal song? Okay, that's what they do. They write and record songs to buy, to use on YouTube. That's what I got. But here's the downside is I haven't shot any beer yet, so, it's time to do some day drinking right now. Let's go to the beer section. All right, well, welcome to the beer section. We're gonna do some day drinking right here. I don't even have a funny Stuart the Stormtrooper bit planned, or do I? No, no, I really don't. Don't have a Stormtrooper bit planned, but 
What we're going to be tasting today in the middle of the afternoon with no food in my stomach, which I'm really excited about. This was a gift. Now, this was a gift. There's a long story behind this. This is one of my favorite beers of all time, and I haven't had this on video in a really long time. In fact, I think the last time I did Golden Drock, it was just the Golden Drock and not the Golden Drock 9000. So uh, there was a joke when I first met when I first met Kent from Twisted Messes. Kent from Twisted Messes. Kent is Twisted Messes. When I first met Kent, uh, he built an atomizer for me. He built me that El Cabron atomizer. And I was like, dude, thank you so much. That's so awesome. If we ever get to hang out at a vape meet, I'll buy you a beer. Or if you don't drink, I'll buy you a Yoohoo. And he's like, well, I don't drink, so it looks like you're going to have to buy me a Yoohoo. Five vape meets later, and I still never bought him a Yoohoo. And he would always give me a hard time like, hey, Grim, where's my yoo -hoo? And I'm like, shit, I do. Kent, I, I did. I promised him a yoo I promised to give him a yoo and I have not delivered on my promise. So I went on Amazon.com about mm, two months ago, and I sent him like a crate of yoo It was like 40 cans of yoo <laughs> from Amazon. Just had it delivered to his house. And uh, it was hilarious. And I'm like, hey, did you get the yoo uh, Yeah, he has 40 fucking cans of yoo now. So... At VaporCon West, he's like, hey, I have a gift for you. And I was like, well, you don't have to get me a gift. You don't owe me anything. And he's like, no, no, I, have a, I definitely have a gift for you. And I was like, okay, what is it? He's like, well, let me get it. And he gives it to me while I'm at dinner. I'm eating sushi. And he gives me this huge, like, oval egg-shaped package. And I was like, what it is? what is it? He's like, you'll see, you'll see. Just open it. So I start opening it. He's like, actually, I'll just tell you what it is. It's a ceramic baby that I carved. I carved a baby out of ceramic, and I I painted it, and I'm giving it to you. And I was like, wait, what? He's like, you don't have to open it right now. It's kind of a lot of packaging. And I'm like, no, I want to see this goddamn ceramic baby. Kent, you're so weird. Why did you get me a ceramic baby? What am I going to do? What am I going to do with a ceramic freaking baby? So... I'm sitting there, and Ruby Roo's there, and we're tearing through this package, and I get to this bottom part, and I see this, this like, round. I'm like, that doesn't look like a ceramic baby. That looks like a freaking bottle. So, yes. So, I spend, like, I don't know, 15 full minutes opening this insanely intricately wrapped package that he gave me. It was a bottle of Golden Drock and a bottle of Golden Drock 9000, and I didn't get to consume them while I was up in Reno, but they ended up at home in my refrigerator. This is the Golden Drock 9000. So what I'm going to do right now before we open that is click over to beeradvocate.com because I love this beer. I don't need any reassurance that it's really good, but Beer Advocate gives it a 91%. It's an out. Stay I haven't even drank any beer yet. I'm burping. I give it a 91%. It is an outstanding rating. Pours a murky honey orange with a two-inch foamy head. Settles into a film on top of the beer. Foamy lat lattice work and lace ghosts the glass while drinking down. Smells of malt, grain, dark fruit, brown sugar, yeast, and spices. Taste is of malt, brown sugar, dark fruit, and spices. And an alcohol kick on the finish. There is a mild bitterness over the palate after each sip. The beer is a good level of carbonation with a crisp and smooth mouthfeel. I think he meant to say effervescent there instead of carbonated overall i feel this is a good beer it's tasty and dangerously drinkable for its high abv alcohol by volume content so this is yeah this is the this is the golden drock 9000 now i don't know what the difference is between the golden drock 9000 and the regular golden drock golden golden drock so let's, mm, they don't have a website. Ugh. Oh, so the original Golden Drock is a dark Belgian beer with a 10.5% alcohol by volume. It is named after the Golden Dragon on top of the Belfry. Oh, Golden Drock translates into Golden Dragon. It's Dutch for Golden Dragon. This is the quad version of the Golden Drock original. So the Golden Drock is not a quad, it's a triple. This is a quad version of the Golden Drock 9000. There you go. Knowledge. The more you know. So we're going to open this up right now. And uh, it's a cork. And I think we all know how I feel about corks. I'm not excited about this at all. But we're going to open it. And uh, I wish someone was here to open this for me. I wish Ruby Roo was here to open this for me. She's good at corks. I am bad at corks. Bad at corks. Let's open this up. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that little... Uh, 
twisted uh, copper braid on there. What what resistance do you think that is? Anyway, cork. Hello, cork. I don't like you. You don't like me. But let's open you anyway. If this overflows everywhere, I am going to freak the fuck out. Oh, fucking corks. It's like, oh, it's so much pressure. I hate it. Ah. Crisis averted. Oh, that smells just... I, it's, uh, Golden Drock and Golden Drock 9000 always smell a little bit like wine to me. Like it almost smells like a farmhouse ale. So what I'm going to do is pour this into a traditional tulip style glass right over the keyboard there. It is on the effervescent side. It's got a good level of carbonation. Going to do a bit of a heavy pour. Get the head going up there. Look at that. Look how creamy and... Uh, you know, golden ambery brown that is. It's very slightly translucent. I can see through it. I can see my monitor through it. I can see myself through it. Golden Drock 9000. It always smells uh, very whiny, and this has a very high ABV, 10.75 ABV. So needless to say, I'll be enjoying this glass, and then I'm going to have to like eat a loaf of bread to soak up the alcohol so that I can actually sit and edit this vlog video. But this came from Kent, Twisted Messes. Obviously, yes. Thank you so much for the beer, sir. This one's for you. Even though you don't drink, you only drink yoo -hoo. Yeah, uh, it's good. I think, I think I like the Golden Drock just like the original Golden Drock. I think I like it more than the Quad Nine Thousand version. The Quad Nine Thousand version seems to be more carbonated, more effervescent, and it seems to be a little bit lacking in flavor. Like the Golden Drock is so strong and so pungent, those dark berry herbal spices in it, and the 9000 is, seems a little bit more mellow to me, and it seems a little bit more meh. Like we're just going to we're just going to relax with this very high alcohol beer. But it is delicious. The flavor is uh, is basically unbelievable. Mhm. Mhm. Mm. -hmm. Mm, -hmm. mm. Oh. Day drinking, that just reminds me of uh, when I first moved down here to Southern California and I was uh, day drinking all the time. So, uh, I don't really have a juice that would pair well with this, although this one might. This is Yig. This is Yig from Grim Cult. Uh, we're changing the name to just Yig for legal reasons. Uh, there's a big long story involved in there, but we're changing the labels and we're changing the title of the juice to just Yig. No more the horror of, it's just yig. This is a oatmeal cookie custard black currant flavor, and I get the feeling that it's going to pair oh just oh so well with this uh, with this Golden Drock 9000. Yes, yes. That actually pairs really well. The mild black currant flavor of this Yig is really bringing out sort of those low notes of the Golden Drock. That is that is one of the best beer pairings I think I've ever done. Oh, yeah, boy, that's good. That is good stuff. I, later tonight, let me tell you, boy, I'm going to tuck in maybe with some sushi, and I'm going to drink the rest of this Golden Drock, and I'm going to drink this, or drink this Yig. Don't drink e-liquid. Please do not drink e-liquid. I'm going to vape this Yig, and it's going to be, oh, it's going to be a good night, except I have nothing to watch. I finished watching, I finally finished Dexter last night. Look. I don't want to talk about, I don't want to add a television entertainment segment into this vlog. <coughs> sorry, sorry, Sheik. <coughs> sorry again, Sheik. <coughs> and sorry for the third time, Sheik. For anybody wondering, Sheik is just, uh, he's one of my one of my subscribers. He's been a subscriber for a very, very long time. And he doesn't like it when I burp. And he always comments. He says, Sheik is sad when you burp. And so I, I have to apologize to Sheik when I burp. Watch the season finale of Dexter, the series finale of Dexter. It was such a good show. 
up until that last episode, I feel like they pulled a lost on us. And I don't want to spoil it, but it could have ended so much better. How how flushed out the character of Dexter Morgan was and all the cool stuff that he did and how you root for him sometimes and how you think he's stupid sometimes and bad decisions and good decisions. He's such a good character. Man, they could have ended that so much better than they did. I think next up, uh, I'm actually going to finish Sons of Anarchy. Uh, I only got up to season five, I believe, of Sons of Anarchy before shit went weird, and I haven't got to finish it. So maybe tonight, I'm going to enjoy some sushi, some golden drock, some yig, and possibly some Sons of Anarchy. It's good. It's good. I'm excited about it. It's really good. That is a really, really good beer. So, uh, what I want to do next is some shout outs. It is shout out time. All right, so uh, let's do let's do a couple quick shout outs here. I do want to give a shout out to a fellow named Stuart who is currently sporting the Grim Army sticker on his classic 1990 Mini Cooper. He sent me a picture of this. I just think that is so cool. I've always liked the Mini Cooper and this is the this is the classic. This is the old school Mini Cooper. I'm almost honored to be a part of it. In fact, I think his Mini Cooper would look a lot cooler without that Grim Army sticker, but as long as he likes it, as long as he likes it that's what's important i think it's cool thank you Stuart, for rocking the grim army on your 1990 classic mini cooper i do have a shout out to do for a fella named sean so i met mr sean bowers up at the oregon vape festival he was going by blue collar vapor on youtube and he was just an all-around super nice super cool guy he's one of the people up there you know i love going to these vape meets and meeting new people and he's someone that i kind of like hit it off with. He just seemed like a solid dude. And he has an Indiegogo campaign going right now. And go just click the link. Even if you don't donate any money, which I, I, I want you to donate money, just watch this video. It's a, it's a very, very powerful video. And I'm not going to play it right now, but I'm going to read a little excerpt from his Indiegogo page. It says, hello, my name is Sean Bowers, and I'm a full-time student at Portland State University, a writer, published poet, and meditation practitioner. For a good part of my life, I was homeless, drug-addicted, violent felon. Since getting sober and taking up meditation seven years ago, I've been able to transform my life drastically from violence to loving kindness. In addiction, from addiction to inquan word I can't pronounce. Thanks to meditation, I've been able to create a loving, compassionate soul out of a once lost cause. Now, Sean, he, he's a good guy, and I'm glad I met Sean when I did. I don't know if I would have got along with the uh, overly violent, felonious, drug addicted Sean, but Sean has become a great person. He's a good, warm person. He he befriended me right away. He wasn't like standoffish or weird. He was just very, very cool. He's like, hey, let's chill. Let's hang out. We judged the cloud comp together and we had a really great time. And so he's trying to become a meditation facilitator. And he goes on to say, the reason I it would be imperative for me to become a med meditation facilitator and teacher is that I have a unique opportunity to reach a demographic that is often outside of the grasp of most contemporary meditation teachers due to my own life on the streets. My hope is to transmit the life-changing experience of meditation to incarcerated and at-risk youth communities. They may be locked up in youth correctional facilities or in group homes, foster homes, gang intervention programs, or homeless youth shelters, my story can help reach an often unreachable group of children. So he's at, he's basically asking for four thousand dollars so that he can so that he can become a meditation facilitator and teacher and, and reach out to these at risk youths who may already be in prison, correctional facilities, gang reform, stuff like that. I think this is just really, really cool. If I were to attend Engaged Mindfulness Institute certification pro program, I would be able to help a specific demographic that are hard to reach. Uh, with my story and willingness and your donations, I believe we can make a serious change for the better of many youths with a very dim perspective. I think that's fantastic. I think it's very, very cool. I wanted to put this out there because he's a fellow vapor and he's a really good guy, but he's really turned his life around and now he wants to do 
something good for other people, for kids that were in the same position as him, who were, you know, possibly addicted to drugs and violence and spending time in, in prison and correctional facilities. I do believe that he can help it. His video, at least, at least watch, at least watch this YouTube video because he's very well spoken. He knows what he's talking about. And he's just, uh, he's just a really good guy. So definitely shout out to you, Sean Bowers. Everybody go watch this video. And if you can, Donate the money. I think that would be. Uh, I think that would be just be fantastic. So let me get to my shout outs folder. I have one here from Sarah, and I believe I know Sarah. I, I think I met Sarah uh, previously. I believe I follow her on Instagram. And anyway, she writes to me, and this is back in June. So it's a little late. I apologize, Sarah. Hey Nick, my boyfriend James and I are huge fans of yours. We exchange. Uh, oh, that's right. I did. I met them at Vape Bash. We are celebrating our one year anniversary, and we can definitely say that watching your videos has helped us understand and grow as vapors. We were both pack a day smokers, and has been nothing short of amazing knowing that we both got our lives back. Also, James' birthday is on July 1st. Happy, very belated birthday, James. And it would be an A plus gift to give him a shout out from you. He'd probably fangirl pretty hard. Ha ha. Thank you for all you do, Sarah. Yes, I do follow you on Instagram, and yes, we did exchange uh, untasteful jokes at Vape Bash. But Sarah, James, you are shouted out. Happy Vape anniversary and happy birthday to uh, to James. There, I apologize for the tardiness of that. Um, this next one comes to me via David. He says, "Dear Grim Green from GrimGreen.com, I'd like to introduce you to your cat counterpart." Grim the cat from Mesa, Arizona. I named him Grim shortly after getting him from a litter of kittens. I was watching one of your videos and Grim the cat started pawing at my phone. Ever since then, he hears your signature clap. He comes running and watches your videos with me. It's his first birthday this Thursday, vlog day, and mine the following Monday. I was hoping I could get a birthday shout out. If not, then you still have a cat named after you. Absolutely, David. Happy very belated birthday and shout outs to Grim the cat. Uh, even though you are not a vapor or uh, a smoker, I appreciate the support. I always, you know, I always appreciate the feline support from the feline uh, community. I'm glad that you enjoy the videos, uh, Mr. Grim. Mr. Grim the cat. I think that's just fantastic. Next one comes to me from Alex. Hey, Nick, I want to know if you could give a shout out to my girlfriend of almost two years. She has been smoking nine years since starting at the age of nine. Nine-year-old smoker. Two years ago, I had switched to vaping, and it has since become my life and my passion. My girlfriend has been 110% supportive from the start, and she even watches your videos with me. Her name is Alara. Alara, that's a cool name. Additionally, my friends Chloe, Josh, and Campbell, and Hunter have all converted to vaping. If you could shout them out as well, absolutely, to remind them that they are all strong and can do it. I am in recovery. I have three years plus sober. I can't drink beer while watching the vlog, but I have found a couple of non-alcoholic brews, and that's close enough for me. Lastly, thank you for all you do. Stay metal, and let's keep on vaping. Sincerely, Alex of Minnesota, and he attached a picture of him and his lady friend, Alara. Um, do not fret. We are both of legal age to vape. They do. I mean, they look young, but it's one of those, look, look, I'm not, I am not going to get into this whole age thing now. Yes, vaping is for people over 18. This girl has been smoking since she was nine years old, nine years old nine years old by the time if you start smoking when you're nine years old by the time you're 18 and you have the ability to vape think about all the damage that you've already done to your body and lungs in those nine years of vaping nine years old started vaping now she can't vape until she's 18 i i ah 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 it's a slippery slope it's a slippery slope and it's a road i'm not going to go down obviously yes i would freak out if i saw a 11 year old vaping but if that 11 year old had been vaping since they were nine years old ah that's an interesting conversation to have why don't you give me some feedback let me know in the comments how you feel about that if someone starts smoking at a very young age shouldn't we get them vaping as soon as possible or no we follow the letter of the law and we don't let that person vape until they're 18 years old, even though they may have been smoking since they were nine years old. 
it's an interesting subject to uh, to tackle. It's an interesting conversation to have. But uh, actually, absolutely, let's go through the names. Alex, Alora, Cole, Josh, Campbell, and Hunter, consider yourselves all shouted out in the Grim Green vlog. I got one last one for you here. And this one, uh, it's kind of going to be a little bit of a downer. But hopefully we can raise someone's spirits just a little bit. Charles writes to me and says, Hello, Nick. I've been a fan of yours for some time, some time now and appreciate all you do for the vaping community. I've been vaping for three years now and I have never looked back, but this isn't about me. Kyle, a very good friend of mine, is the one who got me away from tobacco and into the world of vaping. Two years ago, Kyle's dad was diagnosed with cancer in his jaw attributed to chewing tobacco use. Kyle did promote vaping to his dad, who did participate occasionally, but was still diagnosed nonetheless. Sadly, Kyle's dad passed away early in June after a strong fight against the tough foe despite multiple bouts of treatment. I would appreciate it if you could give Kyle and his dad a warm shout out if your schedule permits. He is the one who introduced me to vaping and to your channel. Kyle has been a great friend and he can use all the support he can get in this difficult time in his life. Thank you so much. Keep on vaping. Absolutely. Charles, Kyle, consider yourselves both shout it out. In fact, I'm going to have a vape right now for your dad, Kyle. I'm so I'm so sorry for your loss. That is it's just heartbreaking. You want your loved ones to be around for as long as they possibly can and when something happens like this where you get cancer in your jaw from excessive chewing tobacco use, it's something that you look back on and you go, man, that was so preventable. We could have just got him vaping sooner. We could have done this. We could have done that. It's it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Kyle, thoughts, good vibes, headed your way. Keep your chin up in these difficult times and, and give your buddy Charles a hug because he's obviously a really good friend who cares about you very, very, very much. Consider yourselves both shouted out. I believe that is all of the shout outs that I have for now because I do have a whole mess of first impressions to go through. So that's what we're going to do right now. It's first impression time. All right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Before we get into any first impressions, I do need to give a shout out to Mr. VapeMats.com. He has created the coolest thing uh, uh, that I've basically ever seen in my life. Grim Cult Vape Mats. In fact, not one. He even made me the super evil pentagram version. Grim Cult Vape Mats out of the park. I think that's amazing. And then this is the last one. Look at that. Grim Cult Vape Mats with the big raven. And there's like pointy, bloody, splattery stuff all over it. Uh, I just, I just love it. I just love these vape mats. I'm rocking two on my desk currently. I have a bunch of these. I'm going to bring some of them to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to give away. And additionally, we're going to be doing some giveaways a little bit later on uh, with some mods and juice and stuff like that. And I'm going to throw some Grim Cult vape mats in there. In fact, this, oh, you can't see it. Hang on. This he also made for me. It is a Grim Cult poster, but it is metal. Look. And he makes that sound. But yeah, it's all metal, grim, cult. Uh, I think that's badass. This is just one of a kind. And it's going to stay on my wall back there for, I mean, for the rest of my life, I'm assuming. So yeah, huge shout out. Huge shout out to VapeMats.com. Do I have a couple quick things that I want to talk about. And this came from Kidney Puncher. And I know these have been around for a very, very long time. But this is called the Kragen. Okay. And I first saw this. Uh, over a year ago at the original, at the very first Vape Mania Con, a guy had one, and it's an 8 mil Atlantis extension tank. 8 mils of juice. The kind of bummer part is you have to unscrew those screws on the top to get your juice in there, but it's 8 mils, so the frequency of doing it is very, very low. I went like, I mean, passively vaping like this and another device like two days really I mean just passively vaping and then it gets a little bit low and you're like oh maybe I should fill maybe I should fill this up but it holds eight freaking mils of juice uses the Aspire Atlantis version 2 or version 1 base version 1 or version 2 coils on the inside it gets the juice where it needs to go it's got these nice big cutouts on the inside nice little chimney in there 
eight mils of juice. I think it's just fantastic. I like using it. It's on currently on the iStick 100 watt. This has been my lazy vooping and laying on the couch uh, vape. It's been good. The flavor is good. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that real fast because I do have so many freaking first impressions to do. Now the next first impression that I want to do is of this. Now this just came in from Joyy Tech. Looks a lot, a lot like that little sub box mini, but this is the Evic VT mini. Has the same Evic display, nickel, titanium, and a uh, regular you know power wattage mode it also has a bypass mode so you can use this as like an unregulated box mod they do have some specs like you can't run certain ohms on it which we're going to look at in a second back pops off via magnets battery goes in there back pops back on and you can't i mean there's no wrong way to do this oh yeah there is that's right, they would repel each other. Well, I'm an idiot, so there's one correct way to put this back cover back on. So let's see, this is the Ego One Mega Tank. Oh, my monitor just turned off. This is the Ego One Mega Tank, and as you can kind of see, it's been a day, and there's, uh, well, shit. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to focus up here. There's already some, some scuff marks on it. See that? That right there, that is a scuff mark. Can't get those to go away, they're just scuffed. The rest of it still looks pretty nice and white and clean. Just a single 18650. I have a nickel coil head in here. 540 degrees, 60 watts, 0 0.2 ohms. And the vape has been good it hasn't been amazing uh nickel coil heads and look i'm not going to go into the safety of nickel i've been doing my own research i've been talking to kent twisted messes about nickel safety the conclusion that i'm almost coming to is that it doesn't seem safe to vape nickel i'm just going to say it. it doesn't quite seem safe to vape nickel but i'm going to continue researching it this is a joy tech nickel coil head in here this is a 70% uh, VG juice, I believe. It comes from Vigilante Vapors. This is their life of pie. If this wasn't temperature control, I would be getting dry hits. But because it is temperature control, I would not be, I'm not getting dry hits. I just don't think that the coil heads wick juice fast enough. The airflow is huge and wide open. Nice lung hits. And like I said, 540 degrees, 60 watts. And it does that nickel thing where it's really strong at first and then it, ooh, it just, the, your power drops off drastically. And I just keep dragging, keep dragging, keep dragging on it because I don't feel like I'm getting enough vapor. I don't feel satisfied by, satisfied by it. No dry hits though. Decent flavor. I'm very, very familiar with this juice. I vape through hundreds of mils of this juice and I'm very, very familiar with it. Flavor is okay. The button is not clicky. It's very slightly squishy and the up down buttons are, they're kind of both. They're kind of squishy and clicky. Of course, all I can see is a face right there on the bottom. Evic VT Mini. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this slipping out of temp control mode like I did with the full size Evic uh, VT. It's nice. It's a fun little thing. It's definitely designed to compete directly with the Subbox Mini from Kanger Tech. Although I think the Kangers have much, much better quality coil heads than these Egos do. But if you don't want a dry hit and you don't mind a little bit of a cooler vape, hey, these work. These work just fine. So I do have another temp control device here. This is the brand freaking new Vapor Shark DNA 200. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name. Vapor Shark DNA 200. And I've had every version of the Vapor Shark. I had the original Vapor Shark. I had the Vapor Shark DNA 30. I had two versions of the Vapor Shark DNA. 40 and now I have the DNA 200 Vapor Shark. I've always liked the Vapor Shark devices. They've always been small and compact. This one is the first one to run on a lipo pack. Let's look go ahead and look at the website real fast. Where are you? It uses what they are saying is a 3S lipo 
battery pack. And for some reason, they have this battery pack accessible even though the average user never going to get in there. You're never going to there's never going to be a need for you to open this up and swap out your LiPo pack. The average user is not going to do it. And I was asking them why they, if it's a lipo pack, why do you have it user accessible? And he said, we just don't want people to feel like it's a super closed system. And if this was sealed and you were unable to open it, if something happened with your wiring or your lipo pack, you'd have to send it back. This gives people the option, completely optional to if you know anything about lipo packs to possibly get in there let's disconnect this let's disconnect that let's put a new lipo in there but for me and for the average user there's no reason to get in there dna 200 i can't find any information on this on their website it doesn't say what the milliamp hour is but they do say it's a 3s lipo pack battery it supports zip charging and you can use the evolve eScribe software which is actually very very cool well you can't quite see it but when it's locked i put a grim cult logo there with two skulls grim cult with two skulls and i did that all with the eScribe software it's easy to go in there adjust your settings set your wattage you can change the graphics you can have it even not even display the wattage you could have it display like boobies if you wanted to although that would be pointless but you can have it kind of display whatever you want and i think that's very very cool uh, I tore through battery life on this. I was at ECC using this with the Phenotype LRDA, which we're going to talk about in a second, and a titanium build tearing through battery life. This lasted me maybe four to five hours of really heavy vaping. I was just tearing through battery life. Obviously, the lower the wattage you use, the longer the battery life you're going to get, the higher the wattage you use. At a full 150 to 200 watts, I don't see the battery life on this lasting very long at all. But the size of it is great. The buttons are clicky, but this button is clicky and it lights up. I have my favorite, favorite, favorite smoke tech uh, TCT temperature control tank on there with nickel coil heads. This is one of my favorite tanks. It's just, I, I love this tank. I think it vapes great. Because it wicks the juice so well that even in temperature control mode or temperature limiting mode, as I like to call it, it's still you're still getting that nice, big, warm, warm vape experience. Obviously, like with all my first impressions, I want to spend more time with this Vapor Shark DNA 200. I believe the asking price on this is $199. 199. I'm going to put this through the ringer and see if it's actually if I would be willing to pay 199. Now there's not a lot of DNA 200s out there and this is out and currently shipping. It says it started shipping on 824 2015 and right now it's the 27th. So yeah, these have been shipping. These are getting into people's hands. Um it's cool. <laughs> it's just cool. You can lock your water, you can lock your ohm resistance on there. This is a 0.14 ohm nickel coil head. I have it set to 540 degrees, 55 watts, and it's just a good, nice, warm vape. Good. It is good. I'm interested to, uh, I'm really interested to spend more time with this. I think I'm going to bring this with me to, uh, to vape mania just because, eh, temperature control. Maybe I'll feel crazy and I'll build some titanium shit and we'll throw some temperature control in there. So yeah, moving forward, I have some mech mods that I got from Continuous Current. Now, Continuous Current is the ones making the Manhattan version two. If you remember Amerivape and now their AV life, I did get to meet Eric at ECC. Such a super nice guy. And the new AV stuff, the new Amerivape stuff, AV life, Avid life, whatever you want to call them, their new mods are really, really nice. I didn't get one, but what I did get from Continuous Current, uh, in fact, I can't remember his name. He goes by Two Mod God on uh, on Instagram. He hooked this up. This is the Darth Vader engraved. You can't really see it. You can't really see it. Darth Vader engraved brass. Brass? Why did I say brass? This is a copper mech mod. So it's heavy. It's weighty. But it does have that, you know, it, uh, uh, super strong magnet on the bottom. So you can magnetize it to stuff. This is with their Tactical Warhead RDA. I threw some coils in here. Let me fiddle with my cotton real fast. I threw some... Uh, coils in here this is 22 gauge anarchist wire 
I did about seven wraps on each side and with this mod it's just uh, it's just hitting uh, really hard. I was recently in Las Vegas on vacation. This combined with the aluminum continuous concurrent con what this combined with the aluminum continuous current Manhattan version 2 was like my vape when I'm drunk and I'm out and about dripping is just the easiest way to go uh, the first night out in Vegas I took the goblin mini and I ran out of juice and I'm like well that's it <laughs> no more vaping for Nick I'm not gonna go in there with a tiny little screwdriver and unscrew that screw on the bottom and fill it like a K-Fun when I'm drunk. But when you're drinking, you can just drip, like, yeah, drip, and then vape, and it's fantastic. I love, love the freaking airflow on this Tactical Warhead RDA. It's just great. It's just perfect right now for me. And I noticed that sometimes I like a lot of airflow and sometimes I like a little bit less airflow. This is like right in the meaty, juicy, good part of airflow. I just, I just love it. The flavor is nice. The performance is nice. It's just, uh, this is just a hard hitting mod. In fact, I don't really even notice any difference in the way that it hits between the copper and between the Aluminum. The aluminum hits just as hard. In fact, when I got this, it was nice and bright and shiny, and it's already becoming just a tarnished mess. I don't, you know, full full copper, full brass mods, they just tarnish so quickly, and you have to clean them, and you have to clean the contacts, and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. I got a Samsung 25R in here. I guess if I'm going to be the responsible vapey person on YouTube. I'm gonna check the resistance of this coil before I uh, before I move any farther forward. 0.15. This is a 0.15 ohm coil. I have a Samsung 25R in here. I'm gonna put this back on the aluminum continuous current Manhattan version two. Good lord, hits freaking great 0.14 ohm dual coil 22 gauge anarchist wire this airflow this samsung 25r battery this this is a fantastic vape just a fantastic vape i'm looking forward to spending much more time with this this is definitely this setup this green manhattan version 2 the tactical warhead rda and the yig juice this definitely will be coming with me to vape mania. This is this is what I want to vape. I vaped it the entire time I was in Las Vegas. I've been vaping it since I got back. It's just it's just a wonderful vape. And I actually dropped <laughs> I actually dropped the copper version hard on the ground. I dropped it and it hit the concrete like you can't imagine. Do you see that like chunk that I took out of it right there? That's from dropping it uh, from about chest height straight onto a concrete sidewalk. It took a big nice chunk out of it there. The great thing is it didn't mess with the button. The button still works just fine. But yeah, this is what I've been rocking recently and I'm, I've been a huge fan of it. So, ah, uh, too much stuff. Too much stuff. We're not even going to get to the series box. We're not going to get to the cult mini. We're not going to get to the switch mod. I just have too much stuff. We'll save those hopefully for next week and then uh, I'm gonna have hopefully I mean I'm gonna have some more stuff from uh, from vape mania as well um, this is a limited edition box from beyond vape and this is the first order stormtrooper on there and a lot of people are asking hey where'd you get that sticker it's not a sticker this comes from vape works and it's actually part of the finish there's no edges there's no stickery edges it's all ooh nice and smooth nice and smooth it's got a door on the back to house your 18650 batteries completely unregulated and what i have on top is the phenotype l so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to go to beyond vape this is an expensive mod but this comes from aria built vape works first order wooden box mod and what i can't find in any of the specs on this is any sort of mosfet protection for the switch Dual 18650, unregulated box, not recommended for builds below 0.08, which is fine. Vapeworks Phoenix style unibody frame precision milled out of maple. 
auto adjusting copper center pin, gold plated battery contacts, silver coated copper wiring, safety fuse is installed to protect from reverse polarity and overheating, very low voltage drop. Charcoal stain with hand stenciled first order commando, a 5.7 clear coat finish for protection and sign, laser engraved ARIA logo on the bottom, magnetic battery door designed and constructed in the USA, limited to 50 units. Chances are this will never get a full review. It's limited to 50 units. This is the only time you will see this on YouTube. I've been using this a lot. I used it all at ECC. I used it most of the time when I was out during the day in Vegas with this Phenotype L RDA. It's got a clicky button. It's an unregulated box. It's also $210. But I challenge you anywhere else in the vape world to find a gray stained maple wooden box mod with the first order trooper on it you won't be able to find it. If this is what you want, there is only one place to get it, and it is at beyondvape.com, and unfortunately, it's $210. But it's been firing this phenotype L like crazy, and I posted, you know, people always, uh, people critique me, and that's fine. I can take critiques, and that's all good. I posted this build on Instagram, and Anarchist Manufacturing reposted it, and someone commented, like, people comment and go, Oh, God, why does Grimm use so much cotton? Oh, God, I wish Grimm would learn how to build. Oh, God, I wish Grimm knew what to do with his leads. I fucking love this build. And I think I think this is a good build. Let me know what you think. I think that is a sick build. The performance I get from it is amazing. I don't see anything wrong that I did with my leads. I don't see anything wrong that I did with my cotton. There's a hole. There's like a ditch in the cotton down there so that when you're vaping it and you have your cap on, all you do is take your juice and you dump it into the middle. And it goes all over. It goes to the coils. It gets everything nice and wet. And the performance I get from it is just fantastic. Now this Phenotype L is a two post RDA and I built it at ECC with titanium wire because you can do a nice long titanium build in between the two posts. Right now this is 22 gauge anarchist wire and it's a contact coil right in the middle. I just get only good hot warm vapor into my mouth hole. I don't get any you know, spitting, I get decent flavor. I don't get any hot spots. There's no burning sensations from my leads. Like people were saying, oh, fix your leads. My leads are fine. They don't, they're not hindering my vaping experience at all. Now this Phenotype L has a mountain, mountain of airflow in it. I have it shut down to one slot on each side. One slot on each side. It actually feels a lot like this Tactical Warhead Airflow. One big hole, one big slot on either side. Now, if I open this up just all the way, look at that. Oh my gosh. That's like just breathing. <laughs> There's no resistance. Bigger clouds, less flavor. It's too much, man. It's just too much airflow for this Grim Green on YouTube. So I'm gonna turn this back down to my single airflow holes. I like the big rounded chuff cap on top. I like the adjustable airflow. I honestly really like the build deck. It's super easy to build on. And I like the way that I wicked it. I like having wick in there and then having a, a hole in the middle that you can just dump juice in and it goes bleh and absorbs exactly where it needs to go. This. This is a great vape. So yeah, Phenotype L. Let's head over to the Aria Built Beyond Vape uh, website. Aria's Anarchist Phenotype L R D A, sixty-five dollars. So goes on to say Aria Built is excited to announce the first RDA designed in collaboration with our expert anarchist builders, Solid Vapor and Ombo Yak. The Phenotype L is a three-piece stainless steel RDA with an easy-to-build two-post deck, deep juice well, and beautiful machine stainless steel finish. The positive post is plated, 24 karat gold for maximum conductivity, and the negative post is milled directly into the deck for a better ground.
The sleeve of the Phenotype L features four vertical Cylon style airflow windows that gradually increase in size. The top cap of the Pheno L comes standard with a Delrin 510 adapter and matching wide bore tip and also a Darylin Chuff style drip top for chucking major clouds. Uh, first of all, if I could go on a little bit of a rant here, I hate the term chucking. I hate it. I hate it. There's a couple things in the vape world that annoy me, and saying the word chucking is one of them. It just it, it grates on me. It's it's like a like heat heat breathing hot breaths of anger coming out of my face when I hear people say chucking. Oh, oh, it drives me nuts. Yes. This is definitely a cloud chasing atomizer. It's designed by builders for builders. And it's funny because you know me. I'm an honest guy. And Omboy OC, he's my friend. And he helped design this. And the first fucking thing I asked him was, why, if it's for builders, by builders, is the airflow on the inside? That's going to impede your build deck. And he goes, no, no. Look at it closer. And he was right. The build deck has a rim on the outside and if you're within if you're in anywhere in the build deck then this this very thin narrow airflow sits down on a little rim right there and will not impede on the deck there you go so he was right but the first thing i said to him was why did you do this why is it like that and he explained it to me the only issue that i've ran into so far with the phenotype l top o-rings a lot like the mutation x they're weak it's just a weakish o-ring and additionally the o-rings on the base while not weak are a little bit too loose i find myself having to juice them up with liquid so they don't go bleh and like squish out the bottom when it was perfectly dry and i popped the top on before i built it the bottom o-ring just went bleh and like squished out the side and i was like shit so i had to lubricate them with juice so that I could more easily pull this off, put it back on, nothing, nothing, haven't had any leaking issues. It's just a cloud chasing atomizer and it's designed for those silly, crazy, omboy OC, twisted messes style. Builds on it, not been getting along with it, bah, okay. I'm never gonna utilize all this airflow. It's just too much airflow and I'm not gonna utilize it, but it's been a damn good vape. So yeah, wow, we got like a half hour of first impressions in there. Um, what I want to do now that we've wrapped up the first impressions, we've wrapped up the beer, we talked about California, I did some ranting there at the beginning. I'm going to wrap this up with some retro vaping. Wow, all right, uh, let's do some retro vaping. I got all my stuff out here that I need. This is gonna be a weird retro vaping. This is something I've been planning on doing for a while now and we're just getting down to it. So let's take a look at this real fast. You see this? Let me zoom in so you can get a, a really good look. Yeah, you see that? Well, that right there is a silica wick. Silica wick. We used to build with silica in our atomizers. Um, so the atomizer that I have right now, I'm going to throw it on this iStick 100 watt. This is the Nimbus. Nimbus RDA. You've got to see these airflow holes. They're the tiniest airflow holes on earth. You see that little airflow hole right there? Same thing on the other side. Look how tiny. Look how tiny those airflow holes are. And that's exactly why vapors used to drill out their airflow holes because these were so tiny so dinky they were designed for mouth to lung inhales i'm even going to put look at that look at that this could be a vape right now that's an rda with a little genie just the tip cap on there wow that is tight that is tight airflow and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to build a single coil on here and i'm going to use silica wick and 29 gauge is this 29 gauge? Let me double check and make sure that this is actually 29 gauge. So I got some 29 gauge wire. So the way that I generally used to build with silica wick is I would wrap a coil, I would install it, and then I would feed the silica wick through. What I would do is I would fold it in half, 
fold this silica wick in half, and then use another piece of wire to kind of pull this loop through the coils. But that's not what we're gonna do today. What we're gonna do today is fold this in half, and I'm gonna hold it on this screwdriver right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it on this screwdriver right here. And the great thing about silica wick is that it was basically temperature proof. Um, so I'm gonna be holding it like that. I'm gonna be holding the silica wick on the screwdriver and then I'm gonna wrap a coil around the silica wick. But the great thing about silica wick is you used spaced out coils. Okay, well this is obviously getting a little bit weird on me here. The great thing about silica wick was you used spaced out coils. So you could wrap a sloppy-ish coil and then fiddle with them and fire them later on while they were attached to the atomizer. So you could dry fire silica wick. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, whoops, six. How's that looking, Mr. Silica Wick? How are those six wraps holding up for you? Now this, that is just an awful coil, but I'm gonna fiddle with it, and we're gonna, we're gonna get this rocking. I'm gonna rock this on a Nimbus, on the, one of the oldest atomizers I have. And if I remember correctly, I used to actually really enjoy this Nimbus atomizer. Uh, I'm gonna link in the description to my first video for it. Where'd you go, little screwdriver? I'm gonna link in the description to my first video for it, and I remember, uh, I remember actually really liking the Nimbus atomizer. This kid, oh, oh baby. You are looking, looking good. So that's installed, and I'm gonna tighten down these leads, and I'm gonna be very, very careful because I don't wanna fuck up this silica. And and then, look at this, look at this janky build. I'm gonna try to fix this. Yeah, silica, look at that. That just looks just terrible. I am bad at building with silica, but what you can do is you go in there with your screwdriver afterwards, right? Looking much better. Let's check the resistance. 1.2 ohms. So I got the coils all uh, all spaced out there, and if I press the fire button, yeah, look at them glow. Look at those coils glowing. That's how we used to build. We didn't, uh, I'm gonna trim this silica down. All our coils were always, always spaced out. I remember watching the old Vape Life videos and their coils, coils were always spaced out with silica wick because we didn't know what contact coils were. Those weren't really a thing yet. And when contact coils hit, oh my gosh, micro coils, contact coils, it was like, you know, a whole new world of, of vapingness in there. So I'm gonna do my best to tuck all this silica into the deck. Good God, silica's a pain in the ass. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna juice these up a little bit. So the ohm resistance uh, came out to 1.2 ohms on a single coil, one, two, three, four, five wrap, 29 gauge, spaced five wrap, 29 gauge, single coil, came out to friggin' 1.2 ohms, that is unbelievable. So I'm gonna try to get all this silica nice and wet so that I can stick it into the deck. And what's strange about silica is when it gets wet, it turns transparent, it turns basically clear. It's so bizarre. I, I, I literally cannot believe that this is working. I'm having just a hard time with this silica, but I got my coils, it's producing a little bit of vapor. So yeah, just to uh, just to recap, even though I just said this, this is a 29 gauge, five wrap with a silica wick, single coil, 1.2 ohms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up these airflow holes with the coil. I've got this set to, uh, what do I have this set to? 24 watts and it's giving me 5.6 volts 24 watts just low watts high ohms high voltage vaping i'm i'm honestly terrified yep the nimbus 
is producing clouds. And it's a very smooth mouth to lung hit. You can't lung this at all in any capacity. The draw is so stiff. Silica wick's getting dry, so let's put some more juice on there. That is insane. I can't believe this is working. It looks horrid. It looks like, ju it just looks like death. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, and you can tell it shows. Silica is just hard to work with. I'm going to try and get you a close-up shot of this now that it's, now that it's wicked. But let me have a couple more. Uh, let me have a couple more toots on here, because I remember I have very, very fond memories of the Nimbus. I can hear it gurgling. <coughs> wow. I feel like I wish I would have put some 18 milligram or something in here. God, you gotta see these wicks. You gotta see how pain in the ass this silica is. See this? Do you see this happening? Do you see the vapors that happen when I press the button? It is just horrific and the silica turns clear when you get juice on it. Look at how horrible that is. Look at how horrible that is. This is not, obviously, not 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 my best uh not my best build and i'm having just a pain in the ass time with this silica i wonder if i can stick it under the coil like like we do now with cotton so much better so much better and i can't believe i'm vaping on this honestly when i retired this nimbus back in 2013 2013 is when i did the original nimbus video and when I eventually retired this atomizer, I never thought in a million years I would ever come back to it. It got so outdated so quickly. So many RDAs came out that had bigger airflow, bigger clouds, bigger clouds, bigger clouds. And the Nimbus is still there. It's still here. In fact, I found a clone, a Nimbus clone on madvapes.com for $14.99 in stock. You can still buy a Nimbus clone on madvapes.com for uh <laughs> for 14.99 and like i said in the distinction in the distinction in the description i'm going to link to back to my original nimbus video this was back this was back like four houses ago this is back when i was in that one bedroom this is back in the britney spears days this is back in the britney spears days and it's unbelievable and people always go back to my old videos and will comment on them. Like this one has 77,000 views. And just a couple months ago, Brett commented and said, 0 .4, 0 0.45 is kind of sketchy for me, says the guy who now vapes a 0 0.2 consistently. And I said, yeah, I, we've really come a long way. I mean, times really change. And I find that to be true with myself too. I mean, yeah, I still hate Genesis atomizers, but you know, people still vape Genesis atomizers. In fact, I talked to someone who was at a meet, it was ECC or it was somewhere where he wanted a Nimbus atomizer. And I told him to email me and he never emailed me. This juice is just awful. Horrific. And I don't want to say the name because I'm not that guy, but this juice is non, 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 non good. I don't like savory vapes. I don't like vapes that taste like cheese, and I don't like vapes that taste like cheese. And this kind of has a cheese flavor, but that draw is so smooth, so mouth to lung tastic. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I'm going to have to edit most of this vaping out of here, but just know just know that with a five wrap 29 gauge spaced single coil at 1.2 ohms on the nimbus which came out in 2013 i am still having a pretty damn good vape 
Anyway, my mind is blown. I can't believe we ever used to build with silica wick using spaced high gauge coils. I am so thankful that we have wide airflow and cotton now. Let me just let me have a let me have a modern vape. God, the flavor is so much better. The clouds are so much bigger. Can't even believe it. It's unbelievable. And then going back and using this Nimbus, it is ridiculous. Like I said, I remember really enjoying the Nimbus. And yes, I did actually say that I thought 0 0.45 ohms was a little too low for me. And now, you know, what's this What's this phenotype L at? 0.14 ohms? That's, that's a big difference in just a couple of years. But yeah, thanks for joining me. Retro vaping. We're good. We're done. Let me put away my my toolbox. I got a toolbox with all my stuff in it, covered in stickers. Done. Now we're going to wrap this vlog up. I want to thank everybody for continuing to watch the vlog, continuing to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Your support uh, just means the world to me. I truly appreciate it. Um, I've been having a great year at Vape Meets. Here's what I have left. Vape Mania 15, Winston-Salem, North Carolina next weekend. I will be there. After that, going to Connecticut with Miss Ruby Roo for a fundraiser for advocacy. After that, in November, I'm going to Vape Fest Ireland, and then that's it. I am going to call it good on any and all vape meets. I've been to more meets this year than I can even imagine. It is ridiculous. I've been traveling every month, sometimes twice a month, uh, to these vape meets. Um, I've been having a great time and meeting people and just having just a wonderful time. But that's going to be it in October, October, or November. Oh, shoot, October's Vapor Dynasty Expo. All right, so October I have Vapor Dynasty Expo. Then November is Vape Fest Ireland. Then that's it. That's officially it. I'm not doing any more vape meets for the rest of the year. December, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those are holiday family times. I'm going to be doing the double features and the vlogs through the rest of the year. And... No more vape meets. No more vape meets. But uh, thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you to everyone who came to vape meets to uh, to hang out and just you know share a handshake and and a vape with me. It's been uh, it's been truly truly fantastic. I can only hope that 2016 sees uh, more vapors uh, all over the place and uh, more vape meets all over the place. It's gonna happen. I don't know why I'm doing like a 2016 prediction in. Uh, August, but what are you going to do? It's uh, the year's basically over. And it's because I can see the end of the year. I can see that November is going to be my last vape meet of the year. And I'm, and I'm actually kind of looking forward to relaxing a little bit, having some family holiday Christmas Thanksgiving time. But yeah, that's what I got. As always, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. I've got plenty of mods, RDAs, all sorts of ridiculous stuff that I've been picking up here and there at different vape meets. Um, I got a new series box. I got the Cult Mini. I've got uh, the Continuous Current stuff, the Evic VT Mini. Um, next week, I think I'm going to throw back in the segment for reviews, that for things that never got reviews, uh, because there's some stuff that I picked up at Vegas Vape Summit that still has not been on camera, and I can't track down the creators of these mods. I can't track down their websites. They seem to have disappeared off the face of the planet. So next week, we're going to get back into the reviews for things that never got reviews segment. But that's what I got for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Shit, I don't have anything to vape. Nimbus!